Hi, my name is Bonnie Gidein and I work as a clinical specialist at Research. I'm glad that you are here to learn more about proton planning in Ray Station. At Research, we advance cancer treatment and we really like proton therapy. Proton therapy has a great benefit to cancer patients and we have designed Ray Station to have all the tools that you need for treatment planning. In this demo, we will look at how we can use proton planning in RayStation, particularly the tools we have for robust PBS optimization. I'm really excited to share with you some of our great new features, such as the Monte Carlo dose calculation on the GPU. Let's start with a walkthrough of PBS optimization in RayStation. Here we have a head and neck patient, which has a high dose target, which we treat to 66 gray, and the nodal volume, which we're treating to 55 gray. The first thing we would like to do is set our dose engine. For optimization, I have three different options, but I have picked to use the Monte Carlo dose engine as this will give me the most accuracy. As you can see, my final dose engine is also Monte Carlo. Let's have a look at the beam computation settings. I can have detailed control of the energy layer spacing and the spot spacing. If we open up the objectives and constraints, we can use smart objectives to define where the spots are placed within a target. So let me explain. As you can see, this patient is treated with three beams. I can ask the system to use the left post oblique to only treat the left-sided target and the central high-dose PTV. It will then avoid having dose travel through this healthy tissue, thus sparing it further. This is particularly important because it can help me limit the dose to critical structures like the spinal cord. Let's have a quick look at the spots in the beam's eye view. And as we scroll through, we can see this is what is happening. What you will see is there are some spots outside of these targets. And that might look a little bit strange, but remember when I said we're looking at the CTV. In proton planning, the PTV is not appropriate because it does not cover all of the uncertainties that can occur. Instead, we use robust optimization on the CTV. And in the robust optimization, we define the uncertainties that can occur that can reduce dose within the CTV. So the first thing we do is we look at our objective functions and we define which objective functions need to be robust against uncertainty. In this case, I've selected the minimum dose to CTV 66 and CTV 55. But what is the uncertainty and how to define it? Up here, we select robustness and we can see the robustness settings. The first uncertainty is the patient position uncertainty. In race station, you can have a systematic uncertainty or an interfraction uncertainty, a random error. In this case, we are assuming that every single day, our patient will be set up slightly differently. So every day there is a different error. We define that error and I have asked for 0.5 centimeters in all directions. And here I can see all of the different scenarios that could occur. We then decide the position uncertainty setting. So is it universal, which is what I've selected for this case, it's applied to all beams universally, or is it for an independent beam or an independent isocenter? These are options we would look at if we were planning a case with junctions. We then can define the density uncertainty, and this is systematic because it is the same every single day. We can see the number of simulated treatment course scenarios and the number of optimization dose computations. And we can also select to compute our scenarios using the Monte Carlo dose engine. Once we've optimized our plan, we would like to evaluate it. 
we can view the DVH for our targets and for our organs at risk. We can define clinical goals. So these are the dose constraints that your doctor will give you for the targets and the organs at risk. And we can see quite clearly whether they have been fulfilled or if they have failed. We can also review dose statistics. And we can also review the Bragg peak for every single beam. There are some great tools to make adjustments after optimization. For a very, very minor adjustment, we have spot editing tools. As you can see, there are Bragg peaks that fall in the spinal cord. This is not what we would like to have, and I would like to be able to remove them quickly without affecting too much of the optimization. I can select the Bragg peak and I can view it in the beam's eye view. As you can see, it's highlighted in purple. I can then choose to remove the spot in here. So I can remove this and then I can remove it here. In RayStation 10B, we're excited to release dose computation on the GPU for our Proton PBS planning. Here, I have our header net case. My dose grid setting is 0.25, and I have an uncertainty of 0.5. When I press final dose, you will be able to see the GPU, and you can see that it's calculating in about five seconds. The speed of this calculation is great for you because it means that you can plan the patients even faster and you are able to spend more time on making the best possible plan for your patient rather than waiting for dose calculation. When doing robust optimization, there is always conflict between sparing dose to the organs at risk and achieving robust coverage to the targets. Looking at this case, we can see that the porosids are abutting the targets, which means that we will have a conflict when we try and reduce dose to the parotas, but achieve robust coverage. To evaluate robust optimization, we use the robust evaluation module. The first thing we do is we define a scenario group. Here I can define the patient position uncertainty that I would like to be robust against, 0.5 centimeters in all directions, but I can have uniform or non-uniform. We can have the density uncertainty and we can change the number of discretinization points. The number of scenarios here is 16 and I've calculated these using a Monte Carlo dose engine. As we've just seen, the Monte Carlo dose engine in RayStation is now on the GPU, which means that you will get a very quick feedback as to how robust your plan is. The tools that we give you to evaluate the plan. Here we have the DVH band for the ROIs. We can click through each DVH curve and the corresponding scenario will be shown in the 2D view. We also have clinical goals. Here we can see the percentage of the scenario that have passed the clinical goal. We can see that for CTV 55, there have been some failures. And also for the parotids, there are also failures. And that is because there is a conflict between trying to reduce dose to the organ at risk while achieve optimal robust target coverage. Organ motion can cause the dose delivered on treatment to be different to your planned dose. Tools to account for organ motion and evaluate the effects on a dose distribution are vital in pencil beam scanning. Here we have a lung case where we've taken a 4D data set and we also have a planning scan. RayStation has the tools to create maximum, minimum and average projections. In patient modeling, you can visualize the breathing cycle and tumor motion. Using our deformable registration, it's possible to propagate contours from one scan to all scans simultaneously. This will save you significant time when contouring. When it comes to planning on lung cases with protons, we need to take into account the range uncertainty 
a daily position uncertainty. And we also need to consider that the tumour is moving during treatment. As the tumour moves during the treatment, the density in the treatment field is constantly changing. The traditional way to take this into account is to create an ITV by summing together the movement in the 4D scans. However, this only takes into account tumour motion and not the change in density. Robust optimization can be used to mitigate the effects of organ motion, including the tumour motion and density changing. Let's take another look at our robust optimization settings now we have a 4D scan. We still have our patient position uncertainty and we have the systematic density uncertainty, but we also have an organ motion uncertainty. There are three options, systematic, so the same organ motion is for every single fraction, interfraction, so the organ motion is different in every fraction, or intrafraction. So in all scenario, in each scenario, all images are used within each fraction. This is perfect for the current problem we have where we are trying to take into account the breathing cycle of the patient where the tumour is constantly moving and changing density. We can take into account all or some of the scans in the 4D dataset. Here I've chosen to use all of them. They will be used in the robust optimization and a plan will be created on the nominal scan. We need to evaluate the plan that we have created to assess is it robust on every phase of the breathing cycle. We can do this in plan evaluation by using the compute on additional data sets. I can select my plan and I can select to recalculate this plan on every single phase of the breathing cycle. Let's take a look at this plan on phase one and phase six. This CSI case has a large target volume and it requires multiple isocenters. The beams used are overlapping across the junction area. The main uncertainty we have when treating a case such as this is the patient position uncertainty when moving between the isocenters. If there is an error, there is a potential for an overdose or underdose, particularly in the junction area. As such, the best way to mitigate this is to have a smooth dose gradient across a junction. RayStation uses the robust optimization to achieve this. I have placed a robust objective on my total PTV. The robust settings that I have is I have a movement in the superior and inferior direction and I'm using independent isocenters. And what this means is that each isocenter can move independently of another isocenter. In plan evaluation, I have all the tools I need to assess the dose gradient. I can see the beam doses. So this is my brain beam, my upper spine, and then my lower spine. And I can evaluate the dose across the gradients. I've also used a line dose across the upper junction to show you the smooth dose gradient that I have achieved by just simply using the robust optimization. A 4D CT is extremely useful to capture organ motion such as breathing motion. However, there are cases where the motion can occur over a number of days. If we think about our prostate case, the motion can occur because of bladder filling and rectal filling. We would like to be able to include this organ motion in either our optimization problem or as part of our plan evaluation. In RayStation, we have a tool where we can simulate the organ motion. I can choose to simulate the organ motion of the prostate in uniform or non-uniform uncertainty. As the prostate moves, 
the bones are stable, so we can also assign ROIs to be a fixed ROI. This will now create six image sets that simulate the uncertainty of the prostate moving in half a centimeter in all directions. In radiotherapy planning, we often come across difficult cases where we have to make a compromise between target coverage and optimal organ at risk sparing. With the unique multi-criteria approach implemented in RayStation, we can generate a Pareto front where we can explore in real time these trade-offs. Let's take a look at our current patient. In the clinical goals, we can see that the spinal cord goal is outside of tolerance. To lower the dose to the spinal cord, I simply pick up the slider and move it towards the green thumbs up. In real time, looking at the DVH, the 2D views and the clinical goals, I can see the effect of moving this slider in the spinal cord, but also the effect to the targets and to other organs at risk. In this way, I can slide to find the optimal plan for every single patient. In proton planning, we know that robust optimization is important. In race station, in the multi-criteria solution, our constraints can be robust to the uncertainties that we can define in the robustness settings. We hope you're as excited as we are about what RayStation can do to advance your proton planning. If you would like to see more, we'd be very happy to give you a personal demo. Thank you for watching.